The very basic premise of Plants vs Zombies is a variety of plants combined together creates a well-structured defense against a variety of opposing threats. But what if we just took that away and restricted ourselves to only one column, only allowing one plant per row? Can you still beat the game this way? The answer is no, because the game forces you to plant two pea shooters before sending any zombies in the first level of the game, hence it is impossible to beat Plants vs Zombies with only one column, but wait, don't go yet. Since 1-1 one -one is not beatable using only one column, we can modify the challenge. Can you beat Plants vs Zombies with only one column, from level 1-2 to level 5-10? Stick to the end to find out, because these levels get quite insane. We begin the challenge at level 1-2. There's not much you can do early on since you only have so many options, so we'll skim through these relatively quickly here. Level 1-2 is beatable using just one column of pea shooters. You don't need to spend lawnmowers like I did here. Given it's only basic zombies, there's not really any real threat yet. Level 1-3 introduces conehead zombies. Although having more health, one pea shooter can still kill a lone conehead in its row without any problems. If a conehead comes behind a basic zombie, it's still not an issue. Once a pea shooter dies, plant another one in its spot instantly, and if that one also dies, stall by planting a sunflower and then replant. 1-4 is basically the exact same as 1-3 except you need to plant two more pea shooters. Not much to say, so let's move right on. 1-5 is walnut bowling. Bowling from any column makes absolutely no difference at all, so I'll just skip this level. 1-6 introduces the pole vaulting zombie. Do you see the problem here? Pole vaulters do not die to a single pea shooter even when they are the only zombie in its row. This means we're forced to sacrifice a lawnmower for every pole vaulter, or spend a cherry bomb. For this level, there's only one flag so it's not a problem, as lawnmowers will reliably take out all the pole vaulters. As for 1-7, even though the level is twice as long, we unlock a plant that is twice as strong, the snow pea. Snow peas on the other hand can deal with lone pole vaulters with its slow effect. To afford them, we can simply plant 5 sunflowers early on and dig them up for potato mines for any incoming zombies. Then, after the potato mines go off, we plant the sunflower as soon as possible given there isn't another zombie in that row to get more sun. And you should be able to afford snow peas relatively easy. And in fact, that's all you need to beat 1-7. You can just AFK after you've planted 5 snow peas. No micro needed, just a good plant doing good things. As for 1-8, the same strategy works as well. Snow peas even do enough damage to completely eliminate a lone buckethead in its row. And as for 1-9, just repeat the same strategy again. This time, you might need to spend a cherry bomb or two, but you should still beat the level relatively easily. If the challenge is going to be this easy, this video wouldn't exist. Now the problem is, how do you beat 110 with only one column? Obviously, one column of snow peas won't be enough this level, but they are still our best regular attacker to group up zombies. With snow peas, we can dig them up after it slows down zombies for a repeater for a bit bonus damage for a few seconds, just about enough to finish off zombies like pole vaulters. It's close, but it works. Otherwise, you want to then spend your walnuts to stall out a group for as long as possible and then cherry bomb the grouped up zombies later for the maximum value. Ideally, saving your cherry bombs are a good idea. Spend your choppers by digging and replanting them multiple zombies in a row. Lawnmowers are mandatory for the last few waves of the level, as pole vaulters get a bit too plentiful, but it should be enough to just beat the level. Just hope that you will get a few more cherry bombs for the final wave, and we should have beaten the entirety of 1-2 to 1-10 with only using one column. Nighttime is where it suddenly gets very bad very quickly, because it's, you know, nighttime? You don't get sun from the sky, but wait, you can't make sun if you want to defend all 5 rows. In nighttime, if you want to defend a row, you have to dig up your sun producer to plant down your defensive plant. Things start getting expensive really quickly and you have no sun to work with and only one column of puff shrooms. 2-1 wasn't an issue, as it was only one flag, with only basics and newspapers. We cheesed it using just 2 pea shooters and puff shrooms. 2-2 is suddenly where it starts to become a huge problem. Even if you try, you can't make nearly enough to afford a snow pea in every row by the first flag. You can only get two. And even if you try, the zombies are simply too plentiful. And even with sacking lawnmowers to get time to make sun, you don't get enough sun back to defend off everything. 2-2 begins what I call the tool-assisted part of playing this challenge. It's not impossible to beat the level, but it requires very perfect zombie spawns. We need partial RNG manipulation. 
Normally, you can't make separate save states to go back in time before a wave happens. However, I can make a backup file off the game from my file explorer and then replace that file with my checkpoint to go back in time whenever something undesirable happens. That is safe scumming in Plants vs Zombies in a nutshell. The zombies spawn are always the same, but the lanes at which zombies will spawn can be changed by simply time traveling back to before where it was spawned. Although you can say this is cheating, I'm here to determine whether it is strictly possible or not to beat the game with only one column, and everything that happens is within the realm of possibility of happening in one particular outcome. So I started doing the painful process of reloading the same save file until I got a wave spawn in the way that was the most desirable for me. And it only took me 38 attempts to load the first flag into one scenario that had the ideal circumstances. I decided to gambit my first roll-on mower for some production. Then, for every wave afterwards, I still need to make a new backup file to return to that point in case anything bad happens the next wave. For example, I reloaded my save file for this buckethead zombie that was going to spawn in the first row initially. After time traveling, the buckethead zombie is now in our snow pea lane without ne needing to spend a potato mine. Save scumming is also useful for correcting mistakes. Initially, I couldn't kill the zombie in the third row, but with the reloading, I placed my puff stream fast enough eventually that was sufficient to kill the zombie. And that's the final wave of the level, so now I just need to load the save file until I get a good enough formation that I can deal with and it's level 2-2 over. Technically, I could grind for 50 hours to get enough coins for everything I want in the shop, but I'll just save time and give myself unlimited coins to buy all the seed slots and upgrade plants. I'm doing so using PVC tools, which I'll be using later as well for something else. Do free is an incredibly simple level. Simply puff shrooms for every basic zombie, a potato mine for every cone head, and only one fume shroom is needed for a one screen door before the final wave. 2 4, and now we have a new problem at hand. If you thought 2 2 was bad enough with us time traveling 38 times back into the past for one wave, prepare for the upcoming insanity. 2 4 has both pole vaulters and screen door zombies, and I think immediately you can see the problem here. If you pick Fume Shroom, not only do you die to pole vaulters, but also die to conehead zombies. If you pick Snow Peas, you are certainly not going to live against screen door zombies because they can't be slowed down. And obviously, you can't use both simultaneously because you're only allowed one plant per row. After more than 2 hours of safe scumming and trying to beat this level, I thought of a new way to make this not so unbearable by introducing some more partial RNG manipulation. Introducing what I call the Foreseer. If we know what the next wave spawns deterministically from safe scumming, why can't we apply that to the whole level itself? I can boot up a level, exit to the main menu, make a backup of the safe state, and then use PVC tools to plant a full column of Gatling Peas to simulate the entire level being played. Beating the level using Gatling Peas would be illegitimate, but what is legitimate is we can look at what zombies will be sent at which wave number from start to finish of the level. Every time you boot up a new level, the zombies that will be spawned or seeded, so the same zombies will spawn every time we time travel to before the point where a wave is spawned. I can restart the level as many times until I find an alternate version of the level where the zombie spawn is favorable, then play it from beginning using the original save state. After a lot of searching, I found this variation of the level which was the absolute dream. From wave 1 to 19, there will be only 4 pole vaulters and 0 screen door zombies. I made a full spreadsheet to estimate the amount of sun I was going to be spending on every wave and calculate what the best combination of plants I should be using. With our pre-game preparation done, I began with the early game optimization. Every little bit of sun counts because you have essentially no margin for error in this challenge. This is incredibly ridiculous and I highly suggest you to not attempt this yourself because it's an extreme waste of time. How ridiculous? To give an example, optimizing the first wave means the first zombie needs to not spot in a row with some production. It took 6 reloads to just get the correct row for one singular zombie, which took 2.5 minutes. Now, scale that number by the number of every other zombie that is a possible changing variable. And there's 20 waves in total, including the final wave. Of this ridiculous time traveling. Hence, I will be skipping over explaining the process of safe scumming for the sake of the video, otherwise it will take forever to explain the 5 hours spent on safe scumming. Some people are going to say I faked this level's waves or whatever, so I provided a download link to all the save states for the winning attempt in the description as proof if you are interested. There will be a link to an unlisted video in the description of the full playthrough of 2-4 with all the pauses cut out. 
after a whole lot of safe scumming, we arrive in the final wave, and I have to pull out the next tool, slot switching. Technically, I can switch any seat I never used to any other seat I need. It's within the realm of possibility, so it's still possible for someone to ever try this challenge without these scumming methods to win. To give an example how I solved these puzzles, let's just talk about the final wave. In this level, the final wave has 9 basics, 1 conehead, 1 vaulter, and 1 screen door. The winning solution is slot switching to Fume Shroom, since we have Snow Pea to kill the pole vaulter that spawns on the 5th row, since time travel allowed us to put it into Snow Pea row. Then, with time travel, we also make the conehead go into the top row, which we don't care to defend since that row has a lawnmower. Row 2 and 3 each only have one basic, since the lawnmowers were recently used, hence Puff Shroom solves those two rows with only gravestone spawns. And therefore, Fume Shroom will solve row 4 and 5, because then there's only basics and the screen door zombie left. Hence, I have just proven that it is possible to beat level 2-4 with only using one column of plants. Only took us learning to time travel, switch seat slots mid-level, and foreseeing the future. With that stupidity out of the way, I'll be skipping 2-5 because you don't even need to plant plants to beat it. 2-6 introduces the football zombie, but it is basically just a repeat of level 2-3, since there's only one football zombie before the first flag, and you just kill it using a hypno shroom. Level 2-7 sees the return of the two-flag format as well as Green Door Zombies, so I was prepared to endure another hellhole of what 2-4 was. This time, I used the Foreseer method to load into a level where the football zombie only spawned in the final wave, making the mid-game significantly easier to solve. But, this level is actually much easier compared to 2-4. You now have Hypno Shroom. Previously, it was impossible to defend a row without completely deleting your self-production. Now, Hypnoshroom means even though, yes, we still have to dig up our sun producer to plant it, the Hypnotized Zombie provides temporary defense for your sun producer. That means you end up profiting a whole lot more from replanting your sun producer. I actually ended up only reloading a total of one time throughout the entire level. The solution to the final wave is fairly obvious. Hypnotize the football zombie and that rows down the rest of the second row. Easy win! 2-8 is slightly tougher than 2-6. Instead of one plant against a special zombie, we need a fume shroom in the dancing zombie lane, two other attackers, and an ice shroom to kill it. Still should not be too much trouble executing that anyways. 2-9 is a bit more complex because of dancing zombies and took a few retries from the beginning to get right. Firstly, I used Foreseer to get as little dancing zombies, limiting its spawn down to just one at two waves before the final wave and one in the final wave. The first flag also took a lot of safe scumming to get right and optimal without errors, and the mid-game is rather tame because it's mostly micromanaging potato mines and hypno shrooms. Since I decided to kill the first dancing zombie with a lawnmower before the final wave, we need something else to clean up everything in the end. That plant is Doom Shroom, so I reloaded the final wave until the first zombies from the graves were all basics, which died a Puff Shroom, so my Doom Shroom can clean up the rest. 2.10 is not that difficult, but very micro-intensive. The conveyor belt gets filled up with Grave Buster since we can't plant it, so we need to dig up Doom Shrooms before they explode to free up the conveyor belt. Yes, it is possible to do that, but you need to do it very quickly to make sure you don't lose a planting spot. Freeing up the conveyor belt is important to get enough Ice Shrooms so Fume Shrooms can kill off Coneheads and Dancing Zombies, as well as get more Hypno Shrooms against Football Zombies. I also suggest switching between Scarity Shroom and Fume Shroom whenever appropriate, switching to Scarity Shroom when the zombie in the row is too far for a Fume Shroom. With only Football Zombies being a reasonable threat and Hypno Shroom taking care of that, this level should be pretty easily done. I'll just completely skip 3-1 because it's literally just basics and coneheads, and the difference is simply spending 50 more sun on lily pads and defending one more row. So, we begin on 3-2, and to be fair, this level is pretty much a joke because it's daytime and we get sun from the sky. With simple sun farming in the early game, by the time the first flag hits, we already have 425 sun in the bank and a snow pea in every row. Newspapers are basically just weaker conehead zombies, and bucketheads die to snow peas, as shown in 1-9. Football zombies die to squash, potato mine, chopper, or cherry bomb. With 4 backup instant kills to choose from, this level is very easy and you should have no problem passing it. Free Free unlocks the Free Peter, which is a blessing for snorkel zombies. The strongest zombie is Conehead, and we know that pea shooters can deal with lone Coneheads as seen previously. Therefore, the solution is very simple. It's just two Free Peters and two Walnuts in the water to block off the snorkel zombies, and that's all is required to beat this level. Free 4 is comparably a pain for us to deal with. 
First of which, Paul Walters added into the equation of Snorkel Zombies makes it a nightmare to deal with. The only way I found to complete this level is with an asymmetrical defense by having Snow Pea in the top row, mainly because I can use safe scumming to force Paul Walters into that row. Somehow, we need to defend against Snorkel Zombies, and putting attackers in the water is not a very economical option, so I decided using a single free Peter to defend both row 2 and 3 to make some extra sun between the first and second flag. This of course means safe scumming is required because one piece shooter is insufficient to take care of Bucketheads or Pole Vaulters. But the compensation is great, and you save a 1000 sun for the last part of the level, which should be plenty enough to plant instant kills every wave against any threats. And even if zombies manage to eat your free peters, just instant kill spam can finish off the last few waves with the extra sun in reserve. There's not much strategy you can use for free 5, but the simplest way to beat the level is pea shooters in every row for everything before the first flag. Then, just walnut stall until the final wave. The waves get sent out extremely quickly this level in particular, so just using one walnut to block off the zombies is actually enough after your pea shooters are dead. 3-6 is where we get all 10 slots, Gatling P and Twin Sunflower. The early game is basically the same except using repeaters instead of snow peas because of zombonies. And you may not know this, but one repeater is enough to take out an entire lone zomboni on its own. If a bobsled team comes, upgrading to Gatling P easily solves the problem. 3-7 is a bit more complicated because it has free flanks and also snorkel zombies, but again, just a full column of repeaters is enough to defend up until the final wave again for the ground lanes. The very specific scenario you might not defend the ground lanes is bucket at spawning in the same row for two waves, which is extremely rare and can be easily solved as well by Jalapeno. The main issue is with snorkel zombies in the water, which in particular you just want to spend a tangle kelp after your repeater gets eaten. You gotta pray that they don't spawn too much, but it's really not that bad since pool cleaners will do the majority of the work for you. This level is very easily beatable without the need for any assisting tools. 3-8 is where I started using Twin Sunflower in the water lanes, because yes, they do give a profit thanks to the zombies not spawning there early on. Dolphin Riders is where things start to get interesting. The pool lanes are essentially impossible to defend using regular attackers, since Dolphin Riders move at such fast speeds. The only way to kill Dolphin Riders is 1. Use your pool cleaner or 2. Spend an instant kill, which explains why I have Cherry Bomb, Jalapeno, and Tangle Kelp. 3-8 is relatively short, so even with 4 Dolphin Riders, you should still beat the level with relative ease. 3-9 might look very difficult on paper, but honestly, it is actually pretty trivial compared to any other nighttime level. The way to counter the zombies in the pool is by simply using instant kills, since digging up repeaters for instant kills against Dolphin Riders will obviously lose a lot of sun. And yes, it is sufficient to do so with just Squash, Tangle Kelp, Cherry Bomb, and Jalapeno. The natural generating sun is enough to fund all the sun required to plant instant kills. You might need to restart once or twice to beat this, but overall there shouldn't be any issues. All things set for free 7 apply for this level in the ground lanes. 310 is the only free flag conveyor belt level we will have to play, and as expected, it is much more difficult compared to all the other conveyor belt levels because of the length. You have no other options other than Free Peter as your attacker, and you can pretty much survive up until the second flag with them, spending an occasional jalapeno on bobsled teams. Your top priority is keeping Tangle Kelps for the water lane special zombies. You also have secondary counters like Squash for the Snorkel zombies and Tall Nuts of Blocked Dolphin Riders. Unfortunately, if you're just a bit unlucky, you'll get overwhelmed by them after the second flag because of how plentiful they are at this level. And yes, it is expected that the density of zombies this level is simply too high, so my method of winning is praying to RNGesus that he will give me more instant kills instead of spike weeds. And regardless, your conveyor belt is most likely just going to completely fill with garbage, lily pads, and spike weeds, so you want to use your lawnmowers as late as possible. I used mine on the second attempt on just the wave before the final wave, and as a side note is that beware that bobsled teams can still spawn in lanes where lawnmowers were just used. So just make sure you can stall them or kill them straight away and you should be good to go in the final wave. I'll directly skip to 4-2 as Plantern is completely unusable in this challenge and hence unlocking it does nothing. What is horrifying is it's nighttime again, but what's good is we have the water. The water lanes are actually a huge upside during nighttime since zombies can't spawn there until halfway through the early game. It is a safe place for our sun producers during night. What's more funny is that Jack and Box zombies make the level they are in easier, since they just explode themselves without ever reaching the end of our lawn. 
This ends up meaning 4-2 is just a much simpler version of 2-7, with us having access to plants like Doom Shroom and two more slots, as well as less zombies because of self-exploding jacks. I didn't even need safe scumming or any other tool to beat this level, since all the jack in the box zombies just killed themselves, so you can pass this level very easily. 4-3 is yet another repeat of something like 2-3, 2-6, or 2-8, with a requirement to kill the one special zombie before the final wave, this time being a single cactus. The balloon zombie is basically just a normal basic zombie after a cactus shoots it down, so nothing more to say. So, the next level... Oh, hell no, man. What the... 4 4 is easily the most difficult fog level. There's also not much margin for error in this level, as dolphin riders are even harder to deal with compared to pole vaulters. On top of that, there's also balloon zombies, in which you don't want to be spending cactus on them, because cactus is very cost inefficient. I ended up using Forseer to generate another spreadsheet and save scum this level. First, using Free Peters can solve all the basics and coneheads, and yes, you can afford them because of the extra sun from the water lanes. My general solution for this level is to simply use lawnmowers on balloon zombies to save sun since blowvers are pretty expensive for how limited our sun is. The reason I used Free Peter is opening up the water lanes for sun production, which we need the reserve sun to afford more instant kills for the later half of this level. Using Tangle Kelp is the ideal solution to Dolphin Riders. With only 4 of them spawning this level using Forseer, I can stack my pool cleaners and then only need to spend 2 Tangle Kelps for the remaining 2 Dolphin Riders. With a combination of instant kills, the final wave should be solvable. Phase Breaker is extremely easy. You have 3 stages to get through, the first stage has only 5 zombies and you get 5 squashes, so the solution is extremely simple. The second stage is 5 basics, 1 buckethead, and 1 football zombie. To solve this, simply squash for the buckethead zombie and football zombie, then snow piece for the remaining zombies. For the third stage, we can just use all our lawnmowers because we cannot counter dancing zombie with the plants that we have, and that's phase breaker done. 4-6 marks essentially the end of the fog levels. It is because in this level, you unlock the cattail, and cattail is just a repeater in every lane. With two cattails, you just have an entirely portable Gatling P. And yeah, I'm pretty sure you can see where this is now going. Four ten is what I would call a scuff stage. Even though we may not have any counters pogo zombies, this stage doesn't spawn them often enough for it to become a major issue. Starfords may kill pogo zombies while it is mid-air jumping over the column, but it is very unlikely. None of the other plants we can use can actually kill pogo zombies, and we also have no instant kills. But simply, they don't spawn very often, and lawnmowers are enough. Aside from that, Starfruits are also by far the best attacker in this level, and you just want to kill balloon zombies by digging up Starfruit to plant a blower. Pumpkins are also here, so even though you don't do quite a lot of damage to just 6 Starfruits, pumpkins will stall out the zombies until they eventually die. And even I was surprised by this, because yes, just 6 Starfruits is enough to beat everything the game throws at you this level. Maybe because the Jack in the Box zombies just do nothing. In 5-1, we only have Cabbage Bolt, which has the same damage as Pea Shooters, and they should do enough damage against Coneheads and Basics. However, a different thing is now we have Pumpkin to protect our plants, so it's a whole lot simpler even when our attacking plants doesn't do enough damage. This level is fairly easy to complete. 5-2 sees the return of, um... Cabbage Pults obviously do not do enough damage against Pole Vaulters, but who says we needed to use Cabbage Pult on the roof level? Instead of using the first column, we can use the middle column to use a better plant, Starfruit. Starfruits can hit zombies behind them, so we can kill pole vaulters from behind instead. And obviously, this is now only possible because we unlocked Pumpkin to protect our plants when they are placed up front. It still took a few safe scums to get right, but this level is much easier compared to the other pole vaulter levels because we can actually kill them with real plants now. 
it's also perfectly reasonable to use Split Pea this level, since it does a bit more damage if a Pole Vaulter jumps over it compared to a Starfruit, so feel free to pick your poison. 5 Free introduces Ladder Zombies, but honestly, you should just use the same strategy as the last level, since Ladder Zombies are literally not even that much of a threat. They spawn so rarely, as only 3 of them showed up for me, and honestly, between your Proof Cleaners and your choice of either Squash, Cherry Bomb, or Jalapeno, you shouldn't have a trouble killing them all. We now have access to the Coffee Bean, which is the last piece of the puzzle we needed to complete this challenge. We can now finally use Gloom Shroom in daytime, and if you're interested in how the next few levels will be beaten, I can show you right now simply how busted Gloom Shroom is. Yeah, basically, you don't need to do anything other than just plant pumpkins, and you have a reserve of like a thousand sun even with only two sunflowers. So, yeah, there's not much you can do for strategizing to beat this level either. You just simply dig and replant chompers if there's a zombie eating the pumpkin or just cherry bomb. I'm not sure what needs to be said, but the level is pretty straightforward and the additional help from cherry bombs are enough to take care of practically everything. Catapult zombies are introduced in 5-6, which yes, we cannot use Gloom Shroom for them, but we can just use basically any straight attacker on the roof instead. Using the straight attackers on the 5th column is more strategical this level to make sure that you have some pad or flower pots in the back to tank for the catapult zombies. And yes, free Peters are plenty enough to beat the level with the help of Pumpkin protecting them. We now get to use the Umbrella Leaf. And now, yes, we can use Gloom Shroom again, even though yes, Catapult Zombies may trample your Gloom Shrooms. By the time it happens, you have almost 2000 Sun Spear. Because I forgot that Twin Sunflower also does happen to exist. So go wild, because the game can send 10 Catapult Zombies and you would still win, because I would be able to buy 5 Squashes and 5 Cherry Bombs and still have a lot of Sun left over. The cost efficiency and how overpowered Gloom Shroom is as a plant is just completely unmatched by basically any other attacker. So by this point, yes, the challenge is basically over. 5-8 speaks the same story for itself. For the level to be harder, even the game decided to send a Gargantuar on the wave after the first black immediately. But I already had more than 1000 sun in reserve. Like, you could have sent 4 more Gargantuars to me and I probably would have still won regardless because of how much sun I'm getting just using Gloom Shroom and pairing it with Tun Sunflower. And I'm pretty sure I do not need to repeat myself for 5-9, because the strategy this level is just a combination of what you did in 5-7 and the level previous. By the time Catapult Zombies show up, I had 1600 sun in reserve while playing pretty sloppy, so, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's enough to beat the level. An added bonus is Jack in the Box Zombies, I guess, because they just explode themselves still, so it adds pretty much no value to the zombie attack. And we are at the final level of the game, on our way to fight Zomboss, and fortunately, this is the easiest level that you need to plant plants. When a Wirth Cleaner goes off from a zombie, not crushed by an Ice Ball or Fireball, Zomboss will stop spawning in that lane for the rest of the level unless all 5 Wirth Cleaners are used. Therefore, this level can actually be beaten using only one singular tile, using just Jalapeno and Ice Room. And now it begins the process of simply repeatedly playing instant kills. After a whole lot of Jalapenos, we have it. Level 510, beaten using only one singular tile. So the answer is, yes, Plants vs Zombies is beatable using only one column, except the first level of the game. But should you try and beat it using only one column yourself? Well, I think you know the answer to that question. If this video is received well enough, I'll do this with all the mini games as well and see if they are possible as well with only one column. Also, shout out to Samen for giving me this idea originally and helping me out throughout this challenge as well as with the thumbnail. Remember to subscribe and thank you to our channel members for your constant support. For now, have a great day and I'll see you all next time.